Hello everyone, this is Paul, and I'm trying something a little different today. Um, I've been wanting to do a Pokemon Nuzlocke for actually ever since I first started my channel, at least a few months after it, thanks to Jane Animations doing her first Nuzlocke ever of Pokemon Ruby. This is my current DS with my long-loved copy of Pokemon Emerald in it, and this... I've done two trial runs in the past, but didn't finish either of them. One, I got pretty far, but didn't keep track of it. And the second one was more a test run to see how things would work out. But today I'm going to experiment with this very awkward, but still at least visible style of recording my gameplay, because I don't have a capture card or anything like that, and seeing if this will work out. This first video, these are going to just be to buy it in random chunks, aren't really going to be outros, I'm just filming until a video gets too long and I move on to the next part and seeing how well it works out, and if people seem to like it or not. I will try and have a more consistent layout for them in the future, we'll figure it out. Just sticking with Paul W, um, there's going to be a lot of commentary, there's just going to be a lot in these opening bits, because the intro moves so slowly when you're familiar with everything, and you can't skip through it all, which is very irritating. But yes, this is Pokemon Emerald Generation 3. One of my favorite generations, personally. It means a lot to me. I have many, many memories with this series. And this game is very personal to me. Okay, let's get on a moving van. I'm really sorry if, like, the screen looks really ugly because of the glare or something. I'll try and figure out a better method if this doesn't work. Inside. Yeah, the first, like, 10 or 15 minutes can move really slowly because you have to do all of this every time you start a new game. Set the clock, go upstairs. Go upstairs, move over here, set the clock. I don't know, whatever random time works. Because, yeah, the battery is run out in the cartridge, so the eternal clock no longer works anyway. Which doesn't matter a lot in this game, it's more specific evolutions, but only like two or three. Okay, check desk. Notebook. All good. Come on, come on. Dad works at the gym, which is how our family is able to stay at all. Stay here at all. Professor Birch is apparently Dad's friend, so I have to go and introduce myself. Meet May, because I picked Brendan. And move on to the next one. I really don't like how slow the movement speed is until you get the running shoes. It's just such an annoying pace sometimes. Screw with this person's belongings on the ground without their permission. I may, I'm Paul. Yada yada yada, yeah, you seem really nice. Yeah, you're nice, but we can be friends. We just met, don't worry about it. Gotta go chat some wild Pokemon and save your father. I go down here, and then we walk up here finally, and see what's going on over here so we can get our first Pokemon. Professor Burr is getting chased around by level 2 Buchiana, so we need to do something to save him. Oh, that's his Exugan, my bad. There's a Pokeball, even though there's clearly three. Okay, uh, starter Pokemon. I always go Mudkip, because Mudkip is one of my favorite Pokemon ever, but for this Emerald Nuzlocke, we're actually going to go Trico. And I'll explain why later, but this is my point. Okay, I'm going to go over some of the basic rules. If these end up changing during a run, I will try to explain why and just keep good track of things, so bear with me. Um, first off, dying, I am going to invoke the rule that dying before the first trainer battle, no, dying before fighting May and getting the Pokeballs does not count. So if like we die in this tutorial, it does not count. The biggest thing that has kept turning me away from doing a Pokemon Nuzlocke is really that I don't have the patience for all the grinding. I just really don't have the attention span for it. It just doesn't work for me. So I'll try not to do like too much off off screen grinding, which could because that could be really obnoxious to just oh suddenly I'm level 30. But it might happen, because I don't again, I don't emulate or have ROM hacks or any of that, so I can't just rare candy it 
I'm gonna have to just grind the old-fashioned way to deal with difficult spots. Okay, uh, naming Trico. Let's see here. This might take a minute, let me think. Got it. Leon the male Trico. Oh, don't be that way. You should go meet my kid. Bye. Okay, we're going to take Trico and go fight May so that we can go get the Pokeballs and the Pokedex. We are gonna, I'm going to try and be at about at least at level 7 to deal with May's uh, Torchic. Now, and part of what I love about Gen 3 is that all three starters are awesome. I'm not big on Sceptile's evolution, on Sceptile, but besides that, all of the evolutions are awesome. I love Mudkip, I love Torchic, I love Trico. They're all great. Um, obviously, with Emerald... Emerald is really repetitive, especially in the early game with Pokemon, and then in the water, because Hoenn is like 50% water regions, there's just nothing but endless tentacool uh, Wingulls and Whalmers. So we are definitely playing with the dupe, with the dupe claws on. Okay, we found a Wurmple. Um, my first, one of my first three Pokemon is either going to be a Wurmple, a Poochiana, or a Zigzagoon, as those are the three Pokemon I can find in this area. But we'll have to see who it is. It'll really depend. And because, like, see, a lot of them are usually, like, level 2 or level 3 in this area, I'm probably going to rely on using Leon to deal with battles and just swap out Pokemon to get early XP. But yes, because I chose Trico. If I had chosen either Trico or Mudkip, it's a good first Pokemon for the very beginning, because Roxanne is a Rock-type gym leader. Um, Tor it's not like Torchic couldn't handle that, but just there's better Pokemon to deal with it. It'll depend on who we find. There, level 6, already learned to absorb. Good start. It won't do much against Torchic, but it's a good first move to have now, so we have more than just Pound. I usually don't... While ability-reducing moves are very helpful sometimes, like, say, Screech and the like, I usually don't do use them early game for stuff like Leer or Growl. I just personally don't find helpful. Let's see if we use Absorb right now against this level 2. It fully brings our health up, which helps. The Zigzagoon uses Tackle, which does 3 damage. We use another Absorb, because this move has a lot of PP. It's the power points. And paint him. Nice. Okay, heal up a little. Yeah, another battle or two should bring us to level 7. Then I will quickly heal at the Pokemon Center just to be safe. Um, Whiting Out. I'm definitely going to end up coming back to this in the future, but I will say this now. Personally, I don't think Whiting Out should count as a loss. And my honest opinion on that is that's, that's like losing the tr troops that you currently have, escaping a battle, and then having troops back home that are less, that are undertrained but still live, that are still living, and you just decide not to use them. So in my humble opinion, if I white out from a battle and I have Pokemon left in the box, no matter how few there are, I go until all of them have fainted. Another thing is, this is more of a personal thing, and you might call it just childish or stupid or whatever, is that I am not calling them dead if they lose. And that's like, if they faint, they can't be used again. I'm putting them, I'm taking them in the box and putting them in an explicit fainted box. And that's it. I will not be releasing them if they die. I prefer not to do that. It's just who I am. Okay, we want to take as little damage as possible now so that we have full health for dealing with Torchic. I want to get the XP if I might run away if this one takes too long to fight. Um, one thing to keep aware of is healing items. That's another big thing to cover. Regarding healing items, 
I'm used to using them, but items in general, it'll really depend. I'll probably just have to get in the habit of not using them in battles, because I have found that that works better. Not here with me. Because, like, um, what I will say is that I will, like, be constantly carrying full heals or something, because, of course, in Pokemon, let's say I have a Tailo that has guts, and that Tailo gets poisoned. In the battle itself, that's great, and Tailo does way more damage. Once the battle is over, um, Tailo is continuously getting poisoned and getting hurt, while I just simply walk around until it's healed. And it could suddenly faint and I could lose it forever, because I didn't heal them from walking around. And Torchic is down. Very nice. I'll give us 69 XP points. Nice. And we're almost at level 8. Okay, now let's get home. So, yeah, um, so no, I, I will absolutely like be carrying full heals on me to deal with something like that after a battle. After a battle, I can use all the healing items I want. As long as I own them. Just to really deal with that, especially if I can't easily get to a Pokemon Center. So I'm going to be using that, but I'm going to try and not be in the habit of using them during a fight. Just in general, I'm going to try and avoid that and see how well it works. I may. Alright. I'm not going to immediately call it quits once we get the Pokeballs, but... Probably before we get to uh, Route 04 or whatever it is. We'll see. First, I'm definitely going to need to get some Pokemon and start working on training them up. It will depend on who we get first. I'm going to quickly just clear out this fight to get to level 8 Leon. No, wait, I'm rambling a lot right now, just especially on just like long patches of grinding. Unless I get onto a good topic or stuff I want to talk about. It'll mostly just be very quiet, just simply going through the motions, and that doesn't make very interesting content, so I'll figure it out as it goes along. For now, let's get home so we can get the decks and the balls. Me on the first try, and thank you. Got the Pokedex. And then May gives me the Pokeballs. My eye is itching. I gotta rub that real fast. Excuse me. Okay. I'm probably buying Great Balls as soon as I can. I really don't want to like waste a lot of time throwing Pokeballs and then losing, then just losing a Pokemon for it. Uh, yes, um, dupe clause is in effect, but running away does count. If the first Pokemon, new Pokemon route does run away before I can catch it, that'll count as the encounter for the route. So again, that's something I'm going to just have to re remember, and I'll be repeating a lot in the game. Thanks, Mom. Okay, finally got the running shoes. Okay. Uh, if we don't catch Pokemon our way through Route 101, I'll go up to Route 103, because Route... Okay, Route 103 does give me a chance for a Wingle. Okay, first Pokemon looking like it's going to be a Poochiana. Gotta be really careful that I don't immediately kill it, so let's use one pound. Yeah, that's a good range. That's almost in the red, so let's carefully go to Bag. And use Pokeball. Hopefully this should land, and then we'll have a Poochiana. Come on, come on. Nice! Our first member of the team, Poochiana. We'll have to figure out when a dark Pokemon can be most useful. Okay, bite Pokemon, Poochiana. Hmm. Nickname to the captured Poochiana. Let me see. And Lobo, the Poochiana, joins the team. Okay, any other... Yep, if we got another encounter there, then it would be just free XP. Let's switch Lobo with Leon. 
I can go in here, heal him up, and then go up to Route 103 and see if I can catch a Wingle. Because getting a Water Flying type would be super helpful in the early game. Game to compliment Leon. I don't think Lobo's going to be very helpful in Roxanne's gym, so I'm going to need to find another Pokemon that can deal with Rock very effectively. But for now, let's see what we can find over here. Okay, who's it going to be? Okay, Duplicate Claws is in effect. Time for some free XP. Leon, need you out here, please? Probably best not to even peck with Lobo until I get him up higher. Yep, so it just comparatively does way more damage. And then I can use a quick absorb, just get a little HP back. Yeah, um, I'm probably going to abuse the experience here a lot. That will also make grinding take a really long time, but I'll figure things out. Okay, so let's keep carefully looking until we find something that isn't a Poochiana. Um... No, Absorb is going to be really helpful when we take on Roxanne. I'd love to catch a Shroomish in the Pelberg Woods on the way there, but I, again, don't know how likely that is. I'd have to look consult the chances again. Okay, something that isn't a Pochiana, please. I'll take a Wormpole, just something else. Yes! Alright, this is huge. Okay, Wingo. Okay, um... I'm going to try... Please don't kill, please don't kill, please don't kill, please don't kill. Okay, uh, gotta swap off a Lobo. Okay, that did a little damage, but gotta swap off a Lobo right now, or else that's gonna really, or else they're already gonna die. Uh, that shouldn't do much, because Leon is grass type. Yes! Okay, I'm not gonna use Absorb, that's gonna kill him too quickly, so I'm gonna use a Pound. Okay, Wingle's in the L. Okay, this could be a really helpful catch if I'm just super careful. Nice! Okay, that's super lucky. Wingle isn't going to help us much near the end of the, in the end game, but it's a super good catch for the early game, especially if we can't catch a Talo. Okay, give a nickname to the Wingle. Let's see here. Um, light and blue, Wingle. Will this fit? is just barely gonna fit. Come on. French fry the wingle. Okay, now let's carefully get out of here. Go in here. And really gonna need you to heal up. Okay, everyone's healed up. I should have a little money right now, so I'm going to go over to the Pokemart, because now i got to focus on just getting Lobo and French Fry up a bit. Okay, 3,500, so I'm going to buy two potions just in case, and three more po three more Pokeballs so I have a good amount, in case I find another Pokemon in this location. Okay, um, I'll definitely discuss this later in the game, but here's the main reason that I am going to be 
that I chose to start with, um, to start with Leon, uh, with Trico. And that is because in Emerald, the final member of the Elite Four, okay, here comes the first trainer battle. Um, the final member of the Elite Four in Emerald is Wallace, not Steven. And Wallace is a water type trainer. So the only things that work well against Wallace are honestly grass and electric type. And there's not a lot of electric types in the game, which is an issue. Okay, I don't like that it's already level 5. That's a little worrying. Okay, that didn't do too much damage. No, so because of that, no, because Steven, in, normally in Ruby and Sapphire, is the final member of the Elite Four, is the champion, and he has a varied moveset. He has a very list roster of Pokemon, but Wallace is entirely water-type training, trainer. So what I'm concerned about is not having enough electric types, because there aren't many in the game, to respond to that with, but having a really strong grass type, like Sceptile, at the end of the game to be prepared for. Yes! Okay, Lobo's up to level 3 now. That's a good start. I like to get Lobo to level 5 and then start focusing on French Fry. Okay, thanks for the trip, guy. Okay. okay, I'm going to avoid that guy right there and just see what we can find in the woods here. Because after this, I should get to Petalburg City. Ooh, a low tap. Okay, uh, good to have another one. It'll be good to have another one on the team. Again, just really just starting to build our numbers here. Okay, uh, Astonish, good, that didn't do very much, even with the critical hit. But Lobo's still weak, so we're going to carefully go to Leon, because French Fry has the type advantage. It's grass, water type, so I don't want to risk an absorb. Okay, yeah, that should be good. Let's just carefully throw a Pokeball and try and get Lotan in there. Don't run away. Throw it, and... Another one to the team. Let's go. Thanks, Lotan. Okay, we're doing pretty well so far. I don't really think a Wurmple will help us very much. Water, weed, Pokemon... Uh, this is a male Lotad, not a female, so I'm going to call you Cattail. Cattail the Lotad. Welcome to the team. Okay, yeah, so we're in a good spot to deal with Rock Sands, Jim. <coughs> Excuse me. We're in a good spot. <laughs> okay. We're in a good spot to deal with Rock Sands Gym, and then once we level up French Fry some more, we'll be in a good spot for Broly's Gym because of fighting type Pokemon. But after that, especially with Watson, we're gonna have to find something that can help out there if we can find a ground type. Because Wingle will die immediately once we get to that gym. Yeah, and Lotad isn't going to be much help either. Okay, Lobo's up to level 4. Great. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's pick up these berries right now. Yeah, let's pick up these berries up here. I almost forgot these are here. Just so that we have a backup to quickly heal during a battle without using any items. Okay, nothing else. I want to carefully go around this guy in case he's also a trainer. Let me quickly go to my bag. Berries. Give. Uh, Leon is now holding an orange berry, and just in case, let's give the other one to Lobo for now. Because again, I just need like 
it's it'd be good to have multiple, but I just really only need like one really well leveled Pokemon. Well leveled water grass type to deal with Roxanne. Ah shoot. I did not mean to get stuck in this trainer battle. This could be dangerous. No, um once I heal in Pebbleberg, even if we end up losing someone here, then I will call it that for the first episode. Okay, that's level 4 Lobo, so we are going to quickly switch out and have Leon deal with, continue to try and deal with this. And then, it, once we swap Pokemon, I might bring out French Fry to get him some XP. First things first, let's go up and absorb. Okay, Growl, good. Zigzagoon isn't a bad first Pokemon, it's just not one that you'll use throughout much of the later game. Because it's because it's normal type. Ah, it's almost dead. Okay, come on. And pound. That should do it. Ooh, almost leveled up. Oh, Shroomish. Okay, so... Yes, we're going to go to French Fry at least to get some XP. Because I'm worried about that water type. But the flying type could mean that we cancel out any grass type moves. How high is the Shroomish? Level 4, um... Yeah, the only damaging move I have is Water Gun, so that's not going to do enough damage to him. So let's go to Leon, who is still fully leveled, just not to risk anything. Because, yeah, Fertritus doesn't have any Flying-type moves yet. Yeah, Shroomish just uses a Tackle. So we just keep throwing Water Guns at a, at a Shroomish that's higher leveled than us, then it's just going to get keep doing not very effective. Uh, yeah, so let's just keep throwing out some Pounds carefully. Oh, shoot, and Absorb. Okay, let's see how much damage this does. Okay, yeah, Absorb is not very effective, so again... How does Trico even do Pound? Do he, like, do it with its tail or its hands? Uh-oh. The effect Spore gave us Paralyze, but we finished the battle, so it's okay. Leon is now level 9, which is great. And French Fry got some XP. Thank you, Lass. Okay, I can't, don't have a Pokemon, so I can't register people yet. Here we are, we made it to Pelberg City. Let me heal and call it a first episode. Now that I have it with all four of the team so far. Okay, let's step outside, save. I hate that the emerald, that emerald can't handle multiple save files. Okay, game is now saved, and that will do it for the first episode. Please let me know if you'd like to see more like this. I would love to continue playing this, but if the views aren't there, then I'll just have to do it on my off time and see how far I get. But with all that being said, I'm Paul. Thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next Nuzlocke.